18, 1 through 7. And the Lord said to Aaron, You and your sons and your father's house with you will bear the iniquity of the sanctuary. And you and your sons with you will bear the iniquity of the priesthood. So we see in the chapter before how Kor stood up and then in 16, and then we see in the next chapter how God shows that Abraham's line is chosen to be priest. So God is just reaffirming it through Aaron here. He lets everybody else know. And now this is a personal message to Aaron and the sons of Aaron. When God calls us to do something, sometimes he'll let other people know. But if he's the one calling us, he's going to directly let us know. And that's what he does with Aaron here. It's important that the people know so they can get allow not stand in Aaron's way of doing this. But it's also important Aaron knows what he's called to do so he can do what he's called to do. You know, when we're called to do something, whether it be teach, whether it be just win souls, it's important that we, it's vital that we know that we're called to do that. But also sometimes it's important that other people know we're called to do that so they can assist or give prayer or anything. Now, if this wouldn't have happened, God showed in the last after Aaron was called. This just shows how God works. Aaron was chosen in the last chapter and reaffirmed his choosing. So for this is just God being personal with Aaron. God's personal with us when he calls us to a special role. Now, the sanctuary at this time was not the temple because the temple wasn't built. But the reason why I believe the term saint because later there would be a temple built. God knew that in advance. But at this time, it was just a tabernacle or a tent. They'd work in this tabernacle as long as it was. And then when they went to the temple, had the temple built, it was still Aaron's son's responsibility to take care of the temple. Now, in the time of the New Testament times, it may be questioned whether all the priests were sons of Levi, sons of Aaron or not. Your brothers also of the tribe of Levi, the tribe of your father, bring with you. Let them be joined with you and minister to you. But you and your sons with you will minister before the tent of witness. Now this, um, it's the curtain that divides. He's saying only the sons of Aaron are to go back there with the offerings, burnt offerings and on the Day of Atonement is said. Only son, Aaron's sons are allowed to go in that part. But as far as anything else in the temple outside the offerings, bringing, gathering food, blowing the trumpets, playing music, whatever, any of the Levites could do this. You know, God has, has certain things that all believers are to do, and then He has special calling for each person. That doesn't mean because we have a special calling, we're just limited to do that and ignore everything else. No, we're to do everything else and then do our special calling. Yeah, oftentimes, doing everything else will make it easier to do particular things He's called us to do. Now, we see in, um, I believe it's uh, Joshua when the land is given out. Levi does not receive any land. That's because God's purpose was them for not for them to raise up land, but their inheritance, as it's referred to, was the Lord. Their inheritance was to serve the Lord. So at this time, Levi's owned no property. Their only responsibility isn't to grow food, isn't to grow anything, isn't to raise anything. It's to serve the Lord and be focused on His work. That's why the offerings were given, because Levites did not do anything to have food. So the offerings were given so they'd have their portion as they were giving, not doing the offerings. You know... um, at this point in time, only the Levites were allowed to do the work in the temple. But we also see that most of the prophets weren't from the tribe of Levi, which shows that those that really had a heart for God, while they can't work in the temple, there's always something you can do to 
for the Lord while the temple singers and whatever that were singing songs of praise were Levites. We also see David singing praise to God on the streets. So while the direct temple service was reserved for the Levites, anyone could come to God and serve. They will perform duties for you in the whole tent, but they will not come near the vessels of the sanctuary or the altar, so that neither they nor you die. Now, this is so it's the one thing they can't do. We uh, see when they move the ark, it's Levites that carry it. Don't specify their sons of Aaron. As, um, when we see them blow trumpets for the call to the temple, it's the Levites that do it, not necessarily sons of Aaron. The men at the gates uh, to the temple are Levites. Most of the time they're not sons of Aaron because the sons of Aaron are in there doing their duties. So the, they had uh, roles filled for these other Levites, and that's what they did instead of working the land. They had certain responsibilities they had to take care of. And outside the sons of Aaron, there was many things they could do. In fact, honestly, the sons of Aaron were more, because all they really could do, because no one else could do it, was do the sacrificial things. The other Levites were open to do the temple worship, they were open to do the gate to make sure only the Jewish came in. They were open to just whatever. God had more had opportunities for it. And Korah, in earlier chapters, fussing when it was just one job that they couldn't have. There was other choices. And here goes the other Levites getting these other options of service. They will be joined to you and perform their duties in the tent of meeting. Now, this is the tabernacle. It's the tent at the time. For all the service of the tent, no foreigner will come near you. So part of their job was not to allow certain people in the temple. First of all, it wasn't just foreigners. If they were unclean, they weren't allowed to go in the temple. It was a part of the responsibility of the gatekeeper to make sure they're clean. If they had leprosy or anything, they could not come in. Even any of the part. It was part of their job to send people away. That was a very important job because if the temple would have been come unclean, it would have been very bad. It's just something that couldn't happen. So the gatekeeper's job was almost as vital as the offering. And this is what a very key part. Plus, the foreigners are non-Jewish, so they would have defiled the temple. Now, they did have a conversion that they could, and they could become Jewish and become clean, and then... But we see in the New Testament how even when that's done, there's certain area entitled to them that they could go in but not the entire temple I myself have taken your brothers the Levites from among the children of Israel they are given to you as a gift from the Lord to perform the service of the tent meeting so it was a cooperative effort the sons of Aaron had their part in offerings but they may have had help gathering the spices for the, the frankincense, gathering the whatever to start the fire for the offering. They may have had someone gather the bowls. All these Levites were assisted in doing what was for the Lord. You know, we're not all called to 
composition in church, but we're all called to be a part of it. Not everybody's going to be called to be the person that's noticed, but we're all called to help be a part of it. The focus is the Lord, and you should have been with this, and for times the focus in the temple was the Lord, and oftentimes when their heart wasn't right, it wasn't. We see Eli's sons, their focus wasn't on the Lord. And you and your sons will attend to your priesthood for everything at the altar, and within the veil you will serve. I have given your priesthood to you as a good ser- as a gift service. The foreigner that comes near you will be put to death. So, at this point in time, it's only the Levites, only Jewish people that can go in the temple. We see in the New Testament how Christ ripped the veil, and how the veil ripped at Christ's death. Service is no longer limited to Levites. We see in the book of Hebrews of how we're all called to the priesthood through Christ. So we're not limited anymore. We're only, but if God doesn't call you to do something, and it ain't stated in His Word that you need to do it, most likely you need to be patient because He's called you to do something else. He's not called everybody to be a pastor or a teacher. So, but he has called everybody to share God's word. Some people he's called more to evangelical evangelist point, but some people he's just called to share with those that are they're in contact with. But the fact is, we ain't limited based on who we are because we're His. And he get, and he'll open the door for service for us. 